everybody. Let's go ahead. <laughs> and we're off. Great. So that's great. So welcome to the 2021 celebration of hometown heroes featuring the emergency responders scholarship program. This evening we're honoring dedicated and brave men and women who volunteer as firefighters and emergency medical responders in Delaware, Chester and Montgomery counties with $50,000 in scholarships to local colleges and universities. I would like to start out this evening by, we have a, a tradition that goes back a few years now. We've been privileged to have Kathleen McNally with us who runs Executive Commons, which is uh, in the offices where the Mainline Chamber of Commerce is located in Wayne. Kathleen is going to kick us off this evening by singing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rattling, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet for oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Great, thank you so much, Kathleen. Beautiful as always, thank you so much. Yes, so we will get on with our program. My name is Bernie Dagenet. I'm president and CEO of the Mainline Chamber of Commerce, but more important this evening is I'm president of the Mainline Chamber Foundation. And we're hopefully coming to the end of what's been a very challenging year through this pandemic. We have so much to thank our emergency responders for. While others stayed home, many of the people on this call today came into contact with individuals who were suffering from this highly transmittable and deadly disease. Some had to quarantine themselves after coming into contact with individuals who tested positive and had to set themselves apart to avoid infecting loved ones, friends, and others they might come into contact with. I know we have some coronavirus survivors who got sick and recovered with us this evening as well. We're grateful for your recovery. On behalf of the volunteer board of directors of the Mainline Chamber Foundation, you'll be meeting some of them this evening. I wanna thank the 27 volunteers being awarded scholarships this evening, as well as all your fellow volunteers and your families who support you in the impressive work you do. This program is for you, stemming from the Chamber's 2004 class of Leadership Mainline, which decided to draw attention to the work that you and your predecessors do to keep people safe, to save lives and property. I also want to thank all the sponsors of the giant Mainline Run and Walk, some of whom you'll hear from this evening as well. While we pivoted this year with a virtual giant Mainline Run and Walk, this year we plan to be in person again on September 12th. We are looking for new sponsors. So if you have companies, connections that would like to find out more about sponsoring the Mainline Run, we certainly would like to talk with them. Uh, a special thanks this evening to Stacy Rimel with the Mainline Chamber team who's helping with technology and the Chamber's bookkeeper, Barb Keslick, who's supporting the foundation as both a board member and through oversight of our finances. Uh, for example, it was Barb who cut the checks for the scholarships. Uh, and she plays that important role. We'll be sending those checks in the mail. The checks are in the mail, it's true. The checks are, well, they're not in the mail, but they're gonna probably be in the mail tomorrow. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce a representative of our presenting sponsor of the Giant Mainline Run. The people of Giant have also done outstanding work throughout this past year plus, helping to keep us fed through the pandemic. Who would have thought that grocery workers would be considered to be on the front lines, but they have been, and I think they have served admirably. Please welcome District Director for Giant, Sherry Miller. Share a few words of welcome. Sherry, are you with us? I am. Thank you so much, Bernie, for that kind introduction. I really appreciate it. 
I'm really thrilled and honored to be uh, here tonight on behalf of the Giant Company. We, uh, we've been a part of this event since 2012, almost 10 years um, since Giant acquired the, the Gennardi's uh, store. So we, we embraced, uh, we were embraced by the mainline customers, um, are ever grateful for the opportunity to serve the community in our stores and, uh, and through events like this, the mainline run, which benefits the I apologize. My dog is like tearing up a bag behind me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Let him have oh fun. Goodness, it's all she's, right. She's a puppy. So she's just, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry Let about that. Let her have fun. Yeah. Um, uh, so the mainline run, which benefits the mainline emergency responder uh, scholarship program, the giant company's purpose is connecting families for a better future. And I can't think of any other way to honor our mission than to honor the firefighters and hometown heroes who place their neighbors above themselves each and every day. And as I reflect on 2020, it was pretty crazy. I know that um, especially true as the world navigates a global pandemic that you and your teams kept going above and beyond uh, time after time. I'm happy to announce that the mainline chamber will be providing 27 scholarships to volunteer firefighters, emergency medical personnel, adding up the $50,000 total. Congratulations to all this year's recipients, and thank you for your incredible service to the mainline families. With that, sorry for my puppy behind me tearing up a bag, but it's back to you, Bernie. Thanks so much. That's great. Thank you so much, Sherry. And thanks to all, all the individuals at, at Giant and your CEO, Nick Bertram, for the great work that you do in the community. All the organizations you support. I know you're a big supporter of Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, for example. And uh, you really are an example of a great corporate citizen in this region. And, and we are appreciative of that and appreciative of your support of this work. Uh, I want to ask everyone to please note that our scholarship presenters this evening are all members of the Mainline Chamber Foundation's Board of Directors who are themselves volunteers in this work. And to our scholarship recipients on the call, please wave when you hear your name. Uh, since we can't be together in person tonight, I said, as I said, checks are being mailed, uh, but we look forward to uh, being together again. We hope we can be together next year for this Hometown Heroes event as we so often has done, have done uh, and hopefully maybe back in the Lower Marion Township building. That's been certainly a great event in the past. I would like to invite Chris Ruain of Tri-State Training and Safety Consulting to give out the first group of scholarships, please. Thank you, Bernie. I have nine scholarship recipients to announce. The first one is Peter Novak, who is an EMT with the Berwyn Fire Company. He will be studying health and sciences at the University of Pittsburgh. Great. The, sec the second one is Jasper Lim Guyette, a firefighter and EMT with the Penn Wynn Overbrook Hills Fire Company. He'll be studying biochemistry at Colgate University. The next one is Nicholas Han, a firefighter with the Oakmont Fire Company, studying health and safety at the New London Adult and Continuing Education. Next, we have Marie Cabanara, an EMT with the Narberth Volunteer Fire Company, studying pediatric emergency care through the National Association of EMTs. Next, we have Brandon Bonafino, a firefighter with the Manoa Fire Company, studying network engineering at Delaware County Community College. We do have Kevin Beck, a firefighter and EMT with the West Whiteland Volunteer Fire Association. And he is studying management and homeland security at the Pennsylvania College of Technology. And we have Jacob Amatucci, firefighter with the Bon Air Fire Company studying business at Penn State Brandywine. Benjamin Schmid, a firefighter with the Penn Wynn Overbrook Hills Fire Company, studying math and applied statistics at Villanova University. And then Riley Savering, a junior firefighter with the Berwyn Fire Company, studying at Delaware Valley University. Now back to you, Bernie. Thanks, Chris. Our next presenter is in business as an independent CPA. She's our board member for the foundation, Anna Sachs. Oh, we just, you were all, all unmuted and ready to go. Let's try to get you unmuted again, Anna. Okay. Great. You're Thanks, good. Bernie. I also have nine scholarships. Uh, the first one goes to Scott Mason, a firefighter and EMT with the Berwyn Fire Company. 
studying fire science at the University of New Haven. Our second is Jacob Homola, firefighter with the Bryn Mawr Fire Company, studying civil engineering at Villanova University. The next is Hugh Friel Jr., fire police with the Bryn Mawr Fire Company, pursuing his EMT at Good Fellowship Ambulance and EMS Training Institute. Next is Clay Cochran, a firefighter with the Berwyn Fire Company, studying forestry at West Virginia University. We have Miles Carr, a firefighter with the East Whiteland Volunteer Fire Association, studying criminal justice at Westchester University. Next is Edward Upzinski III, firefighter with the Murray and Fire Company of Ardmore, studying welding at Delaware County Community College. Our next recipient became a volunteer first responder during college and continues to volunteer as he studies to become a medical doctor. Ryan Scholes, an EMT with VMSC of Norbert and Lower Marion, is studying medicine at the Jefferson University Sydney Kimmel Medical College. As a volunteer firefighter and paramedic, Andrew Ritter's experience as a volunteer first responder has brought him into the medical field where he plans to become a doctor. He currently volunteers with the Berwyn Fire Company and is studying pre-med at Westchester University. Justin Jaffe moved across the globe in Johannesburg, South Africa to live in Philadelphia, where he decided that he wanted to become an EMT at just 17 years old. He is now studying to become a physician's assistant at Thomas Jefferson University and volunteers with the VMSC of Narberth and Lower Marion. Thank you, Bernie. Back to you. Great. Uh, excellent. Congratulations to the, all of those individuals receiving scholarships this evening. I am curious whether Dor Jean, Dean Dortone has been able to join us. Is Dean on the call? Okay, Dean is with Montgomery County Government. Uh, he's actually was one of the class members from 2004 of Leadership Main Line that came up with the idea of Basically, the, the idea was so many people don't even realize that people show up at your home or your business, or many of them are volunteers. And so they wanted to tell that story. And this is really part of the legacy of that class. So that's really exciting. Uh, going to read uh, the five scholarships that Dean uh, was going to be presenting this evening, could not be with us. A student in mechanical engineering at Temple University, Gianfranco Colella, Gianfranco Colella says that joining the volunteer fire service at the age of 14 gave him a strong sense of brotherhood, knowledge, and community. He's a volunteer firefighter with Belmont Hills Fire Company. After being a bystander at a significant medical call, Gabriel Laskuski became a volunteer firefighter. He currently runs with the Bryn Mawr Fire Company as well as a few fire companies in Lancaster County while he studies mechanical engineering at Villanova University. Alexa Danicola grew up around the Radnor Fire Company as the daughter and granddaughter of firefighters, but it wasn't until after high school that she realized that she wanted to become a first responder herself. She feels that this part of her life has given her the strongest friendships and is now pursuing her, pursuing her paramedic certification and degree at Delaware County Community College. With the past year having been challenging for everyone, especially in the emergency services, Leah Givinis, feels that this experience has only reiterated just how important and critical these services are to helping those in our communities. Leah is currently studying neurobiology at St. Joseph's University while volunteering as an EMT at the Narberth Volunteer Fire Company. And Pierce Flanagan shared with us an amazing account of a water rescue from last summer as part of a crew of volunteers from Gladwin Fire Company, highly trained in swift water rescue they worked together to save the lives of many and solidified his decision to serve his community. Pierce is a volunteer firefighter and EMT at Gladwin, studying public health at LaSalle University. Next up, we wanna hear from the individuals who are so important to helping us to raise the funds for these scholarships. And they are the co-chairs of this year, Giant Mainline Run and Walk. I'm gonna start out with Eric Hildebrand of Coho Partners. Hi, Eric. Thanks, Bernie. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to just share a little bit more information about our annual giant mainline run and walk. And as you probably heard from past years and, and heard earlier today, this is the primary way we raise funds for the scholarship program. 
the 2022 run walk will be in person this year, which we're very excited about. And it is planned for Sunday, September 12th at 8.30 a.m. Uh, it is a five kilometer run, uh, which is also accompanied by a one and a half mile walk so that the non-runners and families can participate so there's no excuses, we should see you out there. <laughs> Uh, this will be the 20, uh, 24th year of the event, and it passes right down through the streets of Wayne. If you haven't done it, we really welcome you to come out either as a volunteer or as a participant. Uh, I want to thank and turn it over to my partner this year and chairing the run committee, Eric McCracken. Eric? Thanks, Eric. I just wanted to say that I'm pleased to be working with Eric this year to start out. And, uh, you know, we've had very, I've had a long history with with the run, you know, the company I work for, the Haverford Trust Company is a very big supporter of the event. Uh, we encourage our employees and their families to participate. And we have done this for, you know, very many years, as I've said. Um, one of the unique parts of our event each year is to see the fire and rescue vehicles on site. And we hope you'll be out in full force this year on that morning of September 12th. So please answer the call for us when we reach out to you. Um, secondly, uh, many of you do business with companies that may want to sponsor the run walk this year and we always need more sponsors um, so if you have any suggestions uh, first for those sponsors please contact the mainline chamber of, of commerce offices or reach out to one of the foundation board members you're seeing on the call tonight um, last but not least if you aren't on a piece of equipment or out on a call that day please sign up and participate as a walker or runner our sponsors love seeing big numbers of attendees and participants, and you can all help us out with that. Thanks. Back to you, Bernie. That's great. I'm so appreciative of the work that, that our run committee does. Uh, actually, several of the foundation board members who are, are on this call are part of the run committee, and uh, we're meeting regularly and planning this year's event, and we're looking forward to being together and having the big expo in the parking lot of the chamber offices as well. So uh, it'll be great to be together again. We arrive now at our Thomas J. Hayes scholarships, and I'd, I'd it's a privilege really to honor men and women who are making such a huge difference in our community. They deserve great recognition, but at the same time, we must all be reminded that volunteering in the emergency services can come at the greatest of costs. Each year, we remember with gratitude Thomas Hayes. Tom served with the Marion Fire, Marion Fire Company of Ardmore from 1999 until his untimely death shortly after a call in 2006, he was only 25 years old. Tom was the fire company's technology leader because of his knowledge of electronics and computers. He was an accomplished, accomplished apparatus driver and served as a treasurer of the Active Members Club. He was also active in civic affairs, receiving the first Gloria Wallach Citizenship Award, and he became the youngest member of the Wynwood Civic Association. He was recognized for his outstanding service as a volunteer firefighter by the Rotary Club of Ardmore, he was truly exemplary. And to honor his memory, his parents have for years generously contributed to this scholarship program in their son's name. There will be three $5,000 Hayes scholarships presented this evening. Before we present tonight's Hayes awardees, I want to acknowledge the service of Thomas J. Hayes and recognize his parents who are with us this evening, Mr. Thomas Hayes and Mrs. Bonnie Hayes. Tom and Bonnie, are you with us? Would you like to say a few words? We'll get you off mute there, Tom. We've got to get you off mute. Can you find that button? Because I apparently, there you go. Uh, we finally uh, found ourselves on the screen. We're, <clears throat> we're honored that we're able to do this. Uh, and uh, it is very exciting for us because we get to, the opportunity to see all these fabulous young people they are going to be the backbone of our community in the future. And Tom, I've been hoping the connection would pick up again, but okay. 
Uh, yeah, we, we, I, I just, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, we're not able to hear all of that, Tom and Bonnie, but we're so happy you are able to be with us this evening. And hopefully next year we'll all be in a room together and we'll hear and see each other in a different way. But thank you so much for all the support that you've provided for, for this scholarship program. You've really brought it to a different level by being involved in the way you've been. So it's been, it's something that I appreciate so much. Thank you. So we're gonna move on now to presenting those scholarships. And I'm gonna ask um, Charles Waterman, who's the owner of Closets by Design to present the two first Hayes scholarships this evening. Charles. Okay. So um, our first Hayes scholarship recipient feels that by serving her community as an EMT, she has been able to connect with her neighbors in a unique way especially being on the front lines of COVID pandemic. Deborah Weintraub grew up with a doctor as a father and plans to become a doctor herself. She's currently studying cognitive science at the University of Pennsylvania and is a volunteer EMT at VMSS uh, or volunteer medical services at Narberth and Lower Merion. So with that, our first scholarship winner, Deborah, we thank you for all that you have done and we'll do in the future. Thank you. Uh, our next recipient, our second Hayes scholarship recipient is a third generation volunteer firefighter. Alexis McEnhone grew up around the Bon Air Fire Company and plans to become a pan, uh, paramedic in the future. She states that everybody has a story, good, bad, and ugly. First responders get to help uh, make those bad and ugly situations better. Alexis is studying pre-athletic training at Newman University while volunteering as a firefighter at the Bonaire Fire Company. We thank you very, very much, Alexis, for all that you do. Great. Thank you, Charles. And I wanna note that Charles and, and Closets by Design is one of the sponsors of the Giant Mainline Run. And a couple of years ago when you know, we had a really good run of beautiful mornings, beautiful Sunday mornings for many years. And we had a rainy morning uh, a couple of years ago. And Charles brought all his tents out and kind of saved the day. For, put his, put, was able to put our electronics under cover. So we still had our, our PA system. Um, and the run went off really without a hitch. And, and uh, Charles was a, was a new member of the foundation board at that time. So we appreciate that. Uh, next up, we have someone else who has provided us uh, such a high degree of service to the foundation, our immediate past chairman from Brilliant Strategies, John Durso, to read the next, provide the next Hayes Scholarship. Hi, John. Hey, everybody. It is my pleasure to present our third and final Hayes Scholarship this evening. Um, this Hayes Scholarship recipient serves as a firefighter and EMT at the Gladwin Fire Company, and also as an EMT with the student-run Villanova EMS. Sean Meals became a cadet at the age of 15 and was inspired by watching teams of volunteers operate seamlessly in synchrony during the events that otherwise appeared to be chaotic. He's, he's looking forward to combining his experience with his education as he studies electrical engineering at Villanova University. Congratulations, Sean, and thank you once again to the Hayes family. Uh, you're making a, a big difference in the lives of these kids that are protecting us and these, these adults that have served the fire and the EM. EMS community for so long. Um, so we, we, we can't do this without you. So thank you very much. Congratulations to Sean and all of our scholarship winners. Thanks. Great. Thanks, John. Congratulations to our three Hayes scholarship winners and to all of our scholarship winners this evening. Our final speaker, assigned speaker this evening is Maureen McAleer. She is the new, rel relatively new, just a couple months chairwoman of the Foundation Board of Directors. Uh, and she also is with a sponsor of the Mainline Run uh, from Wisfus Bank. So Maureen, take it away. Thanks, Bernie. Thank you, everybody. Before awarding tonight's 10,000 Community Service Leadership Award, I wanna highlight another group of volunteers, my fellow board members of the Mainline Chamber Foundation, who dedicate their time and effort to ensuring that this scholarship program continues each and every year. This is a working board, and I personally wanna thank all of them for their commitment to this work. In addition to the members who you see this evening on the screen, we have a few that were unfortunately not able to join us. They are Dr. Brandy Nemchenko of Experience Chiropractic, Charles McGarvey, who is Chief Fire Officer 
and Fire Marshal for Lower Marion Township and Christian Hoyt, uh, Pay USA, and also Joe Tankle, who had technically pro technical problems. Uh, Joe is our treasurer and he is with Handicrafters. So thank you to all the board members for all that you do. While we have to raise money for these scholarships each year, and the giant mainline run walk is the main way in which we do that. Since we're able to succeed this difficult year, I'm confident that we will be able to do this again for our scholarships in 2022. We are currently seeking a new sponsor for our 10,000 Community Service Leadership Scholarship. In the future years, and to attain this level of giving, we will need to find some additional sponsors. And with your support and the dedication of our volunteers and those who come behind us, we hope to be giving these scholarships out for years to come. Now for our 10,000 Community Service Leadership Scholarship, this year's recipient became the first female firefighter EMT at the Ardmore Fire Company in 1992 and now serves the community with her two sons at her side. <laughs> Judy just <laughs> I think she knows who she is. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Go ahead, Maureen. Keep going. Judy, it's not Judy over. Judy it's Flanagan serves the Marion Fire Company of Ardmore, the Gladwin Fire Company, and as a life member of the Narber at Narberth Ambulance. She was with Narberth Ambulance on the horrific scene of the helicopter small plane collision at Marion Elementary School in 1991 when five people were killed, including Senator John Hines and two schoolgirls. In her scholarship application, Judy said she will never forget that horrific scene that day which provides an example of what an emergency responder might face on the job. We are happy to support Judy in her decision to pursue something she has always wanted to do and become a nurse. Judy's enrolled in the nursing program at Montgomery County Community College, planning to graduate in May of 2025. Over the years, Judy has met and helped so many people and made her compassionate, diligent, and hard worker passing through those traits and passing those traits on to her two sons, Pierce and Colin. She is a proud, she is proud to serve the community and be the mother of the two sons who serve right alongside her. So congratulations, Judy. Um, you are on the call and, <laughs> and we invite you to, to say a few words. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm, I'm just, I'm so proud and honored to receive this award and I cannot thank you enough. I'm also proud to serve my community and continue to do so and beyond proud of my boys um, who have carried on the tradition. So I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. Well, we are grateful for all that you do and actually all of our all of the volunteers. I mean, we want to thank you all for joining us tonight to celebrate, honor, and to give us the opportunity to shine a light on the volunteers and the invaluable service that you offer to our communities. Uh, thank you for keeping us safe. God bless you all. God bless America. And I'm just so happy to be a part of this. This is a great, uh, a great experience for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Round of applause. Even if we only see it, it's pretty good. So we'll take it. Uh, we, we again, appreciate your service and wish you all a great rest of the week. And, and thank you for everything that you do. Um, that brings us to the end of our program this evening. So I'll, I'll say good night and, and thank you once more for all you were doing and look forward to seeing many of you on September 12th on the main line, giant mainline run, if not before. Thank you yes. and good night. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.